here, a Cory Bustard makes its way across the Nossop Riverbed. And the Cory Bustard... <laughs> oh, God. My wife has a disease, clearly. And we are heading back to camp because the light is harsh, and she who sneezes like a very loud mouse is getting hungry for scrambled egg and sausages. Mm. How are we going? No, I'm filming. Finally, to Kirsten and <coughs> Hendry, Shall my baby, you are so wonderful. I love the way that you make me laugh, summer. the face you pull when you pretend to be cross, Thou the way you accept me despite my grumpiness, your immense and intelligence and wit, your beautiful red hair, your unspeakably Rough excellent dance shame. moves, your generosity, the, the way you forgive me. I love the little home that you've created and for us. I even almost love that you don't dry yourself before you get into bed at night. Rolling. Wait, before we go, I just want to make sure everything is neat. Your shirt is filthy. My name's James and this is my beautiful wife, Kirsten. She doesn't like being on camera much. We're recently married. And when we mooted the idea of a honeymoon, I had in mind somewhere where we'd be waited on hand and foot. Kalahari Desert Luxury, perhaps. I wanted to go to Swalu. She wanted to go to Swalu. Unfortunately, my budget didn't extend to that. And so we headed into the Kalahari Transfrontier Park, dragging our accommodations with us, camping. An excellent test of a new marriage. This is the tale of our adventures. And away we go. Very excited after, well, a combined total of about 16 butt numbing hours in the car to have arrived here. This is the point at which people like us get judged hard because an experienced camper can smell an inexperienced rookie from about 300 paces. And right now, there are any number of what would have been fur trekkers staring at us thinking these people don't know what they're doing. They are, of course, correct. Are you sure you want to go here? No, we can go wherever you want to go. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go to... Do you want to go... The sound's going to be great on this clip. Are you slamming the doors because you cross? No. Let's do it. satisfaction I imagine a builder has from completing very large construction.
We've just met some people and they were very nice. They said there were leopards about 3 k's up from here, uh, lions as well. Will we find them with our luck? It's highly unlikely, but we, we might be lucky. There she is. Okay. We're going to need extra length on this. That's a cheetah. That's not a leopard. Say hello to these people. Hi. Hi. It's a leopard, not even a coyote. Really? Okay. Yeah. We'll go. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've been sitting with the ingui here, leopard, for some time. It was up on top of a log here. And uh, I aimed my camera lens at it, pushed the slow-mo button, and it was fine for a while. Ingui got up, moved down the slope of the tree, beautifully framed. And then it stopped. And then things out to myself, trying to get clever. Why not put it in 4K, and then we can crop in, in post-production, get a closer look at the leopard. And as I did that, the ingui uh, moved. Forward off and jumped off the tree into the grass behind, resulting in a zero out of five visual. In other words, we can't see her now. Just a tree. Over there, a boom. We had a lovely shot of a jackal lying on the ground. And then we saw a German. And the German said to us, Did you see the lion? The, the game's book, it was eating it. And, and all the jackals around it. And we said, no. no. We didn't see that. Well, turns out that the two lions, male, and the game's book, did, were right next to the jackals that we were filming. We are therefore idiots. We finally discovered the beast, next to a festering carcass that he almost certainly stole. As the sun dipped, fat flies buzzed, and an overwhelming sense of scat and putrefaction enveloped us. Kirsten was somewhat disappointed. In her mind's eye, she saw iconic images of a black-maned lion proudly surveying his red desert domain. I explained in millennial language she might understand that the lion too must chow down. While this was an ignominious funeral for the Gemsbok, his spirit smiled from the great dune in the sky. Comforted that his earthly sacrifice might allow the magnificent cat to once more stand atop the dunes, posing with a good, fat tongue. Here, further indignity for the Beast King. What was this one-eyed pirate lion doing? Was he polishing or was he pleasuring? The arrival of a mate revealed his ministrations to have been for the purposes of soothing his equipment. When an oestrus female is present, he must put his private apparatus to work in excess of 50 times a day. eats the road. Why does the tortoise eat the road? This is classic geophagia. In other words, consuming vitamins and minerals straight from the earth. Perhaps try this yourself. A delicious plate of warmed soil for supper. Yum! Well, we've had our first uh, getting stuck. Moment. Oh my God. What we're doing here is trying to film some squirrels. Here you will see my wife bribing the squirrel so that she may take a picture of it. <laughs> 